three, two, one. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today in our webinar, uh, Brazil Investors and Connectors. This is our second webinar about Brazil. And you have to know that this month in Canada, Brazil is in the spotlight. So as uh, with the other countries, we have a special webinars for you so you can understand a little bit better how is the startup ecosystem in Brazil and how you can expand business to uh, Brazil and you know understand better the, the ecosystem in general terms. So we have really a really nice guest today. They are all joining us today. And uh, Rafael in Rio, our business associate, is moderating this webinar right now. So I'm going to pass the, uh, the word to, to him. But before that, just remember that if you have any questions, you can contact us at latamstartups.biz. Or you can just um, tweet uh, to hashtag Latam Startups. And we are going to answer your questions as soon as we get the tweet or the uh, question through our email. So thank you so much, everybody. I'm going to pass the word to uh, Rafael in Rio. Thank you so much, Miriam. Thank you so much, Miriam. Uh, thank you all for participating. And a and, uh, big thank you to the speakers, uh, definitely, for taking the time uh, to join us. Uh, we're all very lucky to, to have uh, um, this kind of uh, group of speakers and specialists that are joining us. I wanted to give a quick background on, on who, who they are so you understand a little bit of their, where they're coming from, their experiences. Uh, I just want to read their, their short bios and then we can some some questions we had um, passed on. Uh, um, for them to follow up. Nope. She's actually a Brazilian Canadian with over 15 years of experience in global companies. She's very active in both tech communities and in, and in helping and is helping foment, fomenting the relations between the two countries. She's involved in a series of initiatives that are making possible to the Brazilian and Canadian tech ecosystem to be to come closer. She's currently in Brazil and is part of the Brazilian Canadian Education uh, Educational Committee and Vice President of Alumni Canada Brazil and has a company, a Dream to Be, that helps Brazilian companies to inter internationalize to Canada. So she's very much linked to both countries already. Uh, we have Eduardo Sete who's worked in the, the Brazilian of the Innovation Agency of uh, called FINEP the innovation agency here in, based in Rio for seven years managing a program that helps foster venture capital in Brazil and Latin America and two years ago he left Finepi and began investing his money in startups and also to identify other companies in early stage um, um, processes and strategic planning for, for strategic planning and investment opportunities we have and we also have uh, Dr. Youssef Youssef who's international entrepreneur with a strategic focus business vision and mature professional uh, judgment acquired during a successful year as founder and main manager of high tech businesses in Canada and also currently the executive, he has executive experience uh, uh, um, including top management responsibilities, market and product analysis, market strategy, international business administration operations, and he is currently the co-founder and president of the Federation of Canadian Bra Brazilian Businesses. He is located in Toronto. We also have uh, Felipe Matos. Felipe Matos was a first um, director of the Startup Brazil uh, program here uh, that, that launched a couple years ago. Uh, before that, he's, he's, he is an entrepreneur. He's been an entrepreneur since he, in his teenage years with many startups. He is also the co-founder of the Startup Farm, which is he'll explain a little bit better, and it works with the pre-acceleration process of tech of tech um, uh, companies. He is one of the lead. Okay, uh, I think uh, Rafa, you need to turn out the video because it's it's good enough at this point. <laughs> Sorry about that. Can you hear me now, Miriam? Can you hear me better, Miriam? Yes, I I can hear you. Sorry, so, so, so just to go back, um, we're going to start with some questions. We have a mix. So these speakers represent investors and people who work with investments uh, of startups and in and, and the tech world here in Brazil, and, and, and key people that, that understand the Canadian and Brazilian markets well. So we hope that this, uh, this session can, can give a lot of um, general and specific as well um, information that you might need. So perhaps we, we can start with some of the questions first. Um, a, a very general question. Um, 
uh, and we can go through all the speakers, um, and it, and it, perhaps some of them will, will be more be able to who have more experience in this area, and others can 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 focus on the other questions. What are the biggest challenges facing the Brazilian investment startup scene, and what do you think needs to be done to overcome these challenges? Perhaps we can start with a, a Eduardo, um, Eduardo and Felipe to begin with because they work already in the investment side as well. Uh, Eduardo, do, perhaps you can give some your insights on these on this first question of the challenges. Yes. Um, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I think there aren't really uh, big challenges for investors uh, here in Brazil. I think the biggest challenge for investors is to uh, really dig in and find good entrepreneurs. The biggest challenges for uh, companies uh, are actually to be able to raise money. I think that the, the parameters that the local investors seek in startups in Brazil is not really inducive for uh, unicorn development. Uh, I think that's pretty much the biggest challenges that we have right now. I know there's a lot of work, there's a lot of uh, new regulation coming out from CVM that will allow for equity crowdfunding and smaller venture, cap venture capital funds. So I think for the investors as a general, uh, we're pretty set. No, that, that's very clear. Um, Felipe, would you have any anything to add from your own experience in the investment um, um, activities here in Brazil? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think, well, actually there are, there are uh, too many challenges in different aspects. Um, at one point, and, uh, uh, regulations is really uh, an issue, not only in the uh, crowdfunding space, as, as Yusuf mentioned also, uh, on, sorry, on, yeah, so, sorry, one second, Felipe. Uh, Eduardo, could you please mute your, your microphone because uh, there is a hard noise behind. Thank you. Felipe, go ahead. Sorry. No, it's okay. Do you hear me right? Yes, I am. Good. Well, so uh, I, I was talking about uh, the regulations, not only in the uh, crowdfunding space, but also on uh, fund management and fundraising, uh, you you cannot have uh, in a cost-effective way funds that uh, manage very early stage uh, startups due to the, you know the costs and the, the way the regulation works uh, right now. Uh, and also more broadly, if if you look at the regulations and how you incorporate a company, your uh, liabilities. As as an investor, if you're a part partner of a limited company, uh, you you uh, have some liabilities in terms of uh, uh, capital protection, uh, uh, and there are also uh, uh, some uh, I I would say a lack of incentives if you compare uh, what you have in many other countries for angel investors or for uh, or even venture capital uh, in terms of tax taxation. Uh, Brazil currently doesn't have any kind of incentives to to this type of investor, which um, in a sense uh, uh, blocks or at least uh, uh, don't incentivize this this type of, of investors. Great, the, uh, great inputs, Felipe. Thank you so much. Um, perhaps uh, Yusef, would you would you have some other insights that you you want to share to this question, specific question as well? Yeah, uh, I would be pleased to. So uh, when we look into a determinant for uh, for entrepreneurship in any country, we analyze basically uh, as an alternative for the strategy some of the options. Uh, the regulation is mentioned by Felipe, uh, infrastructure, uh, the market situation, access to capital as mentioned by Eduardo, uh, this innovation uh, ecosystem, uh, the human capital, and uh, you know the culture of innovation. So when you look into these variables that we have uh, it, and the situation, current situation in Brazil, unfortunately, you know, in almost all of these uh, items that I mentioned, exception given for culture of entrepreneurship, uh, are lagging behind. And this is one of the problems that I can see uh, in terms of progress in, in uh, investment and, uh, and advancing this initiative toward like having more investment for the Brazilian entrepreneur. 
Uh, I, I would like to cheer and, uh, and commend the efforts that all Brazilians are doing right now, uh, given the situation. Uh, Eduardo, Felipe, and, uh, and Rafael, and Regina, and everybody else, because uh, it's not easy. It's not easy. Uh, we have, uh, in terms of regulation, uh, the time for processing, the cost of, uh, the, 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 well, the taxes, the uh, uh, the tax complexity in Brazil, which is not understood, uh, we, nobody can understand really, actually, rather than Brazilian. In terms of infrastructure, it is really shameful and regretful that we look at, into, for example, the internet and uh, and many other determinant for the techno technological determinant that are not still uh, at the same level with other developing countries. So in all senses and walks of, uh, of issues that we have uh, visited when it comes to uh, these issues as determinant, I can see that Brazil is still far behind. Great. Th thank you uh, also for these perspectives. Um, Regina, would you feel uh, you want to you could have some additional points to add or, and, and then we can go on to the next question. Uh, I think the gentleman's covered uh, the question very well. I guess we can just move on to the next one. <laughs> well, I guess whereas we can start with you then, Regina. Perhaps um, talking about the positive things. What what are some of the opportunities that you think uh, exist for investors in the Brazilian tech scene? And what kind of advice would you give to them with uh, the opportunities that are in Brazil currently? <laughs> it's quite interesting because actually that's what I was thinking. That you know how I would like to approach that. <laughs> so we have a, sure. a you know, we have a, a you know a very well known investor in our team, in Dream to Be's team. Um, you know, lots of people in Brazil, of course, know him, Marco Poli. And we were just talking about that actually yesterday. That uh, you know the positive side it is that uh, you know there is not much competition. I would say. You know, like there's no investors competition because there's not that many yet. So I see that as very positive, of course, uh, you know, as, you know, as our colleagues there mentioned, if it, the investor is interested in Brazil and get to know very well how things work, you know, Brazil, as we know, is very complicated. <laughs> and they always say Brazil is not for beginners. You know, if they pass through that stage and do their homework very well, for sure there are lots of opportunities because, uh, you know, the crisis that we are living, uh, we don't see that crisis in the, you know, in the tech sector, especially the startup. Actually, it's the opposite. Uh, you know, as more people now are becoming entrepreneurs and, you know, and start to think out of the box. So we do have lots of uh, opportunities uh, in my view and, and I think that international investors, uh, again, once they know how to figure out how to do business in Brazil, uh, there is lots and lots of opportunities. And the good thing is because we're still uh, quite young, <laughs> you know, like you, there's not much, uh, as I said, that much compet you know, competitivity like the other countries. No, that's great. That's uh, uh, encouraging to hear as well. <laughs> so I, I think that, no, it's good. It's good to know that, like you mentioned as well, there's less competition uh, in some of these specific areas. So that's something that people need to take into account uh, after go, per persisting, after uh, going through the challenges and obstacles that do that do exist, but um, that it, it's worth outside companies or investors. Uh, well, was it for me because it was like the voice was lagging a bit, I guess, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, Rafael. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, I was, it was to, to for Eduardo. Eduardo, um, what, 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 what advice would you give to investors about opportunities that do exist? Eduardo, please. Um, I think I think that the biggest challenge here uh, for investors, be there, be them um, local or foreign investors, is to actually find good, uh, experienced entrepreneurs. Not experienced as in having had uh, entrepreneurial experience uh, before, but having professional, relevant experience. Uh, on the at the same time, I think that uh, Brazil presents a very good landscape for investing in startups.
we actually invest in companies that uh, uh, they bring a business model that's already been proven and worked uh, in other countries and implement them here. There, most of the sectors here in Brazil uh, lag somewhat of an update on uh, how they do business through technology. So there's a lot of room for that here. Hello, Rafael? Yes, perfect. No, thank you, Eduardo. Uh, I think I think uh, we we definitely want uh, Dr. Youssef and Felipe to answer this this question too. Felipe, what what advice would you give in terms of opportunities in Brazil? Uh, well, I, I I think there are several opportunities for uh, for foreign investors to uh, to invest in Brazil. Um, the the country itself, well, our economy has. has Changed a little bit over the past uh, few years, so the opportunities have migrated from B two C. That's where most of the money was was going to to companies that were trying to sell goods for the um, rising middle class that was growing in Brazil at the time. And right now, I'd say that most of the the investment deals are going to B two B companies. There are uh, using technology to increase efficiency for you know, uh, different sectors. So uh, companies are now looking to uh, differentiate and to innovate and to cut costs and to, to get more efficient. Um, and I, I think that the uh, inefficiency that, that we have here in Brazil in several sectors is actually a great opportunity to use technology uh, to increase the level of uh, um, of efficiency, of management, of several players. So I've seen uh, lots of business-to-business -business deals, lots of um, new uh, um, companies and startups that are uh, working with industries, and by industries I mean manufacturing industries. So uh, doing maintenance, doing uh, uh, logistics management. So there are several business-to-business um, -business opportunities in sectors that used to be uh, more agnostic, more uh, um, uh, uh, lethargic in technology adoption, and they are now looking for uh, 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 ways to increase their uh, profitability by using technology. Um, one sector that I would point out as well is the uh, agritech. Uh, I think over the past two years, we've seen a big number of agritech uh, startups being invested and in entering the market. And as you know, Brazil is uh, one of the f uh, uh, five largest uh, agri-tech producers in the world. Uh, we have a huge uh, uh, plantations on soy and several other beans. Um, and this, uh, uh, this area, they have developed a lot in terms of mechanization, but not that much uh, when it goes to uh, information technology, internet. So uh, there are... Uh, several new startups are now trying to increase efficiency uh, on those sectors. And I would add to that as well that the uh, exchange rate has helped a lot of foreign investors lately. You, see, you know, dollar is way more valuable than uh, it used to be when converted to Brazilian reais, and that makes uh, the uh, amount of uh, the power of foreign investors even bigger. Fantastic. Um, just to highlight again, um, increasing productivity and efficiency efficiency through technology. That's that's an opportunity uh, alone in many sectors it can cover. So thank you for that. Thank you, with Joseph. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Okay. So if you can answer the same question, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, uh, Miriam, it's it was lagging for me too. So okay. Well, uh, Felipe and uh, the other guests they have covered fairly uh, all issues that I... Uh, but what I would like to add is a, a bit of doses of optimism regarding Brazil. Uh, I know that the situation right now is not the best for investment, although it has been pinpointed by uh, Felipe that the, the rate between the American dollar and real would be very helpful for foreign investors. Uh, what I would like to highlight is the Brazilian entrepreneurial culture. Uh, it's a land for entrepreneurs, uh, some of them uh, driven by opportunity, like uh, the tech uh, 
sector. Some of them are driven by necessity, uh, like many other on, uh, entrepreneurial initiatives. But Brazil is still a, a land of a great land for opportunities. And uh, let's take it from a Latin American perspective, not uh, not only from uh, as a market as a unique market, which is Brazil with 300 million, uh, uh, you know, consumers and potential consumers. So the I, I can say that the moment is not uh, the best, but uh, there is a huge opportunity right now to go to Brazil. Uh, there are barriers naturally, and uh, that's why talking to people like Felipe, like us here, and uh, Miriam uh, can help uh, all investors to uh, overcome these difficulties and reach out to the Brazilian market. Great, no, great insights. And actually, that, that leads to the next question. We're talking about, okay, our opportunities do exist and there are some challenges, but reach out to and connect with the growing startup or tech sector for uh, international partners in Brazil. Uh, perhaps we can start with, with um, uh, Regina. Again, please. I, I think Regina I, I, I think just uh, disconnected. Regina. She disconnected, yeah. So yeah, the, question, the question for everybody is, what's the best way to reach out to and connect with the growing startup and tech sectors in Brazil? Uh, so why we don't start with um, Felipe? And then we go to uh, Eduardo and then Joseph, okay? Okay. I'm not sure if I got the question right, but if when it comes to, to partnerships, so what's the best way to make partnerships in order to um, explore the, the investment opportunities in Brazil? Was that? Yeah, that, that's, the, that's correct. How, how startups can actually get or investors can actually get in contact with uh, the startup ecosystem in Brazil. Okay. Uh, well, the, the Brazilian ecosystem, and, and I would say that nowadays you do have a, a strong ecosystem, a, a lot to, still to go, but um, uh, Brazil has a dozen of active uh, VC firms, uh, dozens of thousands of venture investors. Uh, we have 50 accelerators, 300 um, incubators. There are some um, mega hubs and huge co-working spaces for uh, startups, and, and not only in São Paulo, but in several, uh, but in some other cities as well. Uh, so, the the best way would obviously would be to uh, look for one of the, the uh, communities that has uh, more uh, circuits uh, with the market that you're targeting. Uh, and talk to the main uh, leaders of, of that community. Um, right now in Brazil, I think we have at, at least 50 to 100 events every week uh, concerning uh, startups and startup investment and startup communities, uh, mostly in Sao Paulo, but we do also have Belo Horizonte, Recife, Rio, Florianópolis, and some uh, other cities with uh, pretty strong local ecosystems. Um, and each city would have its hubs. Here in Sao Paulo, for instance, uh, Google just launched a Google Campus, which is a mega hub to connect entrepreneurs and the community. And there's also another uh, uh, big space called Kubo uh, that was created by uh, Banco Itaú. So have a large uh, bank here in Brazil, and these are you know uh, six to, to seven floor uh, buildings. They are packed with entrepreneurs, and and where most of the investors and leaders of the community would would go on a, on regular basis. So um, those are very good places to get connected with with the ecosystem. There are uh, a variety of events uh, for every for different markets that you could. Uh, search for uh, and go in order to connect to folks specifically in that sector. Um, 
I would say that, well, there's also the uh, Brazilian Trade and Promotion Agency called uh, Apex Brazil, and they're also responsible for investment attraction. Uh, they have offices all over the world. They, they don't have one uh, in, in Canada, but they do in San Francisco and Miami These are the, uh, and New York. These are the three ones they, they have in North America, which you could look for uh, in order to uh, um, check for opportunities for investment uh, and how to, to, to get to Brazil as well. Uh, and if you're, if you're a startup or even an investor, I would say that the startup accelerators such as Startup Farm, um, venture capital firms, angel associations are also good spots for you to, to look for uh, opportunities. Great. Thank you, Felipe. Um, Eduardo, you, thank you so much, Felipe. Uh, as being an investor, Eduardo, yourself, um, how, how, how would you receive or how, how have you received contact from uh, foreign investors or other companies interested in, in, in soft landing investment opportunities in Brazil? Perhaps your advice. I'm sorry, Rafael, I couldn't get uh, your question. I'm sorry. So, as an investor yourself, working with the uh, tech sector, so how would you recommend other investors to reach out to investment groups here in Brazil specifically? Um, I think I think that Felipe covered uh, pretty much everything. Um, I think the best way would go if you want to reach out to other investors like yourselves, go to Abevecati, which is the Brazilian uh, Venture Capital Association. Um, they're very friendly and they can put you in contact with other investors in your uh, that invest in the same uh, profile of company that uh, foreign investors are looking for. Um, I think that's pretty much it or just honestly just send, send an email. Most of the investors here in Brazil are very friendly to outside investors. Great. No, that, that, that's if that's, I could, that's good to know. For uh, go yeah. ahead, go ahead. Uh, Brazilian investors, they love to. Uh, a good way would, would be to, f to find a local investor that that you trust. That's related to the, the sectors that you're uh, interested at, and and co-invest. That's that's a good approach as well. Uh, fantastic, um, Regina. I think we lost for a little bit, but I think we're, we're, you're. Back here, and just the question was, what's the best way to reach out to and connect with the growing startup and tech sectors here in Brazil? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, sorry, I got connected for a bit. Um, you know, main, I heard a little bit. Who was speaking last? Sorry, I couldn't. I, I couldn't recognize who was speaking last. Uh, uh, Felipe, Felipe, and okay. Eduardo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I, I I do agree that you know ideally you try to definitely uh, connect with you know a local company here uh, that's related to the you know to the kind of business you're doing uh, you know as as in Canada we also have like you know each accelerator has uh, you know your own niche and they are specialized on that so ideally you try to connect with you know an accelerator here or you know, or a company that can put you in touch with all the people, uh, you know, that really would make a difference and introduce you to the ecosystem. Uh, that's that's kind of like the first step. And from there, of course, you know, the network doesn't change much from when we do business uh, from Brazil to Canada. It's the same thing, right? Like trying to build up uh, your network. And, and, and get to know how the ecosystem really works. Uh, but mainly, I, I would I, I give the same suggestion. That is go through, you know, like trying to find the niche of, you know, if it's agrotech, you know, trying to see who is best in that area uh, down here in Brazil and, and, and try to connect with them and, and start to build from there. Fantastic, thank you. Um, Dr. Yusuf is actually in Toronto, so, um, I, what's your advice when you when you speak with with uh, companies interested in Canada, interested in coming from Brazil, coming to Brazil, but as based in Toronto? From that, yeah, um, from that perspective, sorry. From our perspective here, and the Federation of Canadian Brazilian Businesses as well, like it's an initiative. It's a not-for-profit organization headquartered at Humber College, with all the, the support given by this academic structure and the, certainly the government. 
to support entrepreneurs to go to Brazil, and that's what we found that Canadian might be interested in. Uh, the major difficulty that they are finding uh, in moving to Brazil is understanding Brazil. It's it's really it's really very tricky for them. Uh, the the second uh, factor that I would mention is the easiness to go to the United States. So there's a huge barrier. Felipe mentioned once uh, in one of his conferences that I was present. Uh, the major barrier for Brazil, uh, for uh, Canadian maybe to go to Brazil is uh, the wall called United States of America, which is easier. Now, understanding Brazil, it's, it's a bit tricky, and that's why we advise uh, every company that is coming here, uh, asking us a small business and mid-sized business, this is our speciality here at the Federation, uh, we advise them to first think really what they are looking for, as mentioned by uh, Regina, what is the sector that they are willing to invest in, uh, or they are, uh, what kind of connection do they uh, want with Brazil, and the second step is please let's go to Brazil, because there are a lot of uh, psychological barriers uh, regarding what's coming uh, you know, through the news about Brazil and the culture, of Brazilian culture of business and many different things, so the first advice is okay, what do you want to do? We have the bridge, we have the partners, we have the accelerators, and we have a couple of uh, partnerships in Brazil with uh, uh, international uh, incubators uh, for soft lending purposes. So let's go to Brazil first to like give you an idea and glance about what you can be able to do there. And then the other subject that we were covered by, uh, like fairly by Eduardo and uh, by Regina and by Felipe. So. But going to Brazil is important to me and understanding the culture. Perfect. Thank you so much, John. Very, very good insights. I just want to go back again. If there's anything else you guys can add about any of you would suggest about the angel investment opportunities in Brazil and what other sources of funding are available for startups in Brazil. As an international investor, um, would, would it be easier? And specifically, I don't know if that's a part of perhaps a repeated question or if there's anything you can add to, to the, specifically the angel investment uh, sector here in Brazil. Uh, perhaps starting with Eduardo, um, as a as an angel a senior angel investor here, Eduardo. Yes, if I, uh, I think that uh, you can find a lot of um, either innovative companies for uh, to invest in as an angel investor for um, startups, or you can uh, also find a lot of companies that have business models that uh, plainly replicate something that has happened uh, in other countries and. Uh, has been proven. Uh, if you want to go a, a little bit up the ladder to uh, early stage companies, I think uh, I've seen a lot of family companies in Brazil that are very, very good companies. Uh, they lack the funding to really grow. Most of them have uh, some kind of debt with banks which are very expensive because they have a hard time finding other so sources of funding. Um, I think, in general, that that would be uh, my my two cents on this. Perfect. Thank you, um, Felipe. Any anything you can add in terms of angel investment in the scene here in Brazil, and how that could be related to uh, international foreign interests coming into the angel investment as well? Um, sure. Um, well, the, the angel investor community in Brazil is um, is still very small, even though it's growing. Uh, so we have, uh, according to uh, the Brazilian Angels Association, uh, between four and six thousand uh, angel investors in Brazil, um, and a, a good part of those investors are not active. Uh, so. Uh, most of the angels here they are or organized in associations. So uh, a good a good way to start would be to look for those associations. The main one is Angels do Brasil, and they also have regional chapters. Um, so uh, they you know, uh, welcome investors and help you to connect with opportunities locally. Um, 
And I would also uh, look for uh, the top accelerators in the country because they are probably one of the main uh, deal uh, source providers, and they uh, uh, provide a first uh, good screening of opportunities and a preparation of uh, of them. So they're uh, good good ways to start. Uh, once again, in terms of incentives, as I was mentioned, we still don't have. Uh, any incentives, neither for uh, local or foreign uh, angel investors. There was one initiative uh, by FINEP that was announced last year to start a fund that would match uh, funds with uh, angel investors, but it has not been uh, uh, released yet. And since the government has changed, we're not sure if this initiative will ever be uh, uh, on, on course anymore. Thank you so much, Felipe. Uh, I would like to, uh, you know, finalize with some questions here for our guest, and uh, um, I like to explore one part that is well known here in Canada is that many companies are so frustrated with the process to actually enter to Brazil and to do business in Brazil. So, from your perspective, I'm, I'm going to start with uh, Dr. Joseph and with Regina after. I would like to know uh, what is the process to actually a uh, company uh, need to pass through to enter to Brazil? Like, uh, how long they have to invest uh, in time and travels to actually get the uh, first customer? And second is uh, how, how they actually close a deal with Brazilians. What is the main uh, problem for Canadian companies to actually go there and, and close deals with Brazilians? So, well, they're, the Canadian, uh, you know very well, Miriam, uh, they are very conservative uh, business, uh, businessmen and women. Uh, so in terms of doing business with Brazil, the first barrier is the culture. Uh, the bridges are there. I mean, Regina is doing an amazing job, and uh, the Federation is here, and uh, you are uh, LATAM, too. You are doing your best to make the connections. Now, uh, the, the, we, we envision two or three ways uh, to connect these companies to the Brazilian market. The first one is, uh, I would say, for entrepreneurs, there's no barriers. Uh, Canadians are not the huge risk takers, and that's why they sometimes try to avoid Brazil. Uh, but for those who are really entrepreneurs, they have a couple of Canadian, we have a couple of Canadian companies that are doing, uh, uh, doing very well in Brazil and doing good businesses there. So the first is to have a clear idea of what business model they, they, they would like to move forward with. The first one I would like to mention is, uh, if you would you like to do a, the FDI, uh, Foreign Direct Investment in Brazil, would you like to have your subsidiary set up in Brazil or not? The second is, would you like to partner with a Brazilian company? And, and the third, would you like to have a distributor from Brazil? So these are three major ways that you can uh, pick up in order for you to continue like uh, your uh, way of invest or moving uh, with your uh, company to Brazil. So in this regard, what we see and envision is the major difficulty is the tax uh, structure. It is very difficult. Uh, funding is not a problem for Canadian companies because the government here has a very and fair, uh, fairly good structure for funding. You know, EDC, Miriam, is very good. So all operation are, can be funded by the Canadian government or helped by uh, uh, to be funded by uh, Canadian banks. Uh, the issue is how do we bridge both markets? And this is the major difficulty. So the comp the having accelerator accelerators there in Brazil helps a lot. We have partnership initiatives like Regina's initiative helps a lot. And uh, but the barriers are cultural barriers. That's mainly what I see here. Uh, they have lack of understanding of the Brazilian culture. They do not understand Latin America in general. Uh, they're afraid of moving there. They don't have money, although Canadian government has a lot of initiatives here that can be funding initiatives for entrepreneurs to move forward. You have the trade commissioners in Brazil in four Brazilian cities. The Canadian embassy is very active. Uh, but, you know, to our not, uh, you know, expectations, I would say, well, we have mostly is people are curious about Brazil, but not seriously looking forward to do business with Brazil so far. Uh, thank you so much for that, Joseph. So uh, that's that's really good to know that you know you, you have to put some efforts and actually 
look for the right, uh, you know, the right approach to Brazil. It's not that you are just going there to explore the business. As uh, you, you need to uh, go with a with a certain plan and something in in, in your desk that you are going to say, okay, this is the next step for me, and this is what I'm going to get, and this is my goal. So it's not just the the thing to explore the market. So Regina, uh, in terms of your experience uh, the, uh, to actually dealing with Canadian and other international companies, how long it takes for um, an international company to actually get a first client? <laughs> I wish I could answer that question, but there's no, you know, <laughs> there's no, no, I, I don't think you no know, one can actually answer that, uh, you know, because all depends. Uh, what we normally say is like for any international business takes at least six months for you to start to really understand how the market works. But again, even then, you know, that we can't really measure that because depends what kind of company, depends if it, they already have, uh, you know, if their products are business already global, so that would make it a little bit easier to just get into Brazil or you know, if, it, if it, it is the first time that they are going to international markets, it, it, it all depends. Uh, but again, uh, there is no magic, <laughs> you know, uh, number there. It's the same as when we, you know, we do business from Brazil to Canada. We normally say uh, you need to really take the time. You know, as I said, to first really understand the markets. Uh, you really need to start to build relationship. It's not just, oh, I want to go there, I want to try to, okay, it's just, you know, I start to sell. That doesn't doesn't happen. Just if you, of course, if you have, you know, a product that is just totally ready for the market and, you know, you're just ready to go, but normally uh, takes takes time. Again, I would say at least six months to a year at least. Uh, you know, most people think about international business. It's just used to translate your website or, oh, I have a friend down there. I know someone there in Brazil that they're going to uh, help me to, you know, to get into the market. Uh, but it takes a lot of effort, as, you know, as said before, and, and do the right thing and really persist, especially in Brazil, that we are um, – one of the main things, like we, you know, we like to to know the people we do business. We like to build a relationship. So that that takes time. You need to call. It's so different when you when you call to the business in Canada. You already can start to talk about business right away. And when you call Brazil, for example, you need to start to ask how is you know how is the person's family, how was soccer, how was the weekend, you know that 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 sort of thing. You don't. You can pretty much start the business uh, without, you know, feel close uh, to, to, you know, to the person you're doing business. That's, you know, that goes into the cultural part of how Brazilians do business. Um, you know, I would say, but mainly uh, the other, you know, facts. They are, of course, Brazil is a little bit, uh, you know, more challenge uh, and trickier because of the size and you know all the specifications, but. Mainly, it is like for any other market, it takes time for you to, you know, to to do business in another country and understand how things really work. With you know, in the tech world now, with startups, it's a little bit easier than you know in the offline market, but it's still a very challenge. So, it, you know, I'm afraid that I can't really <laughs> be awkward and say how how long does it take. Perfect. No, that, that's okay. Um, and I'm sorry for the audience if they hear some of kind of noise behind. Is because Regina has so nice to join us while she's at the, at the airport. So, <laughs> so that's the sorry about that. Yeah, don't worry. Uh, so that's why the noise behind. So sorry about that. Uh, but uh, okay, that's understanding. So th there is no specific time for companies to actually look at Brazil, but it's uh, it's pretty much understanding here that if you are actually going to Brazil and do business, you have to take in consideration that it's going to take a long time and to build a relationship with locals to actually get a deal after. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen after a couple of visits. It's going to happen after a few visits and you actually build this relationship with your potential client uh, or your potential partner. 
So uh, it's just to uh, um, put uh, in some uh, perspective, you know, of what, what is the challenge of Brazil is not is not actually the market itself, you know, is not because the politics and uh, of course all that involves in the, all this, but uh, you know, you have to consider to spend enough time there and to actually meet your customers. So um, finalizing all this today, we are going to go to some questions that we already received from the audience. And uh, the first question is, is of course, um, regarding the political situation in Brazil and how that is affecting the uh, startups in Brazil. So I don't know who would like to start with that question, uh, who would like to answer that question. How is the political situation affecting startups in Brazil? Well, I can, I can, I can start this conversation, uh, and then we'll be very brief. Uh, well, political situation is is uh, part of what we call the regulation uh, environment, and uh, and it it is determined for everything else. But it would be a great opportunity because uh, of what's going on. So this is a kind of kind of ambiguous uh, approach, but I would I would say I'm not afraid uh, of uh, having any problem in the future for entrepreneurs who intend to go to Brazil and to invest there. Uh, it's a great opportunity for now. It's uh, cheaper, as mentioned by uh, some of uh, the guests here. Uh, the rate to dollar is very attractive, and I would advise some of those who are endeavoring going to Brazil just to check it out. Perfect. Thank you so much, Joseph. Uh, any other answer around? Um, well, I, I would add to that that mostly I would say that what compromised us um, startups the most in here is more the, the, the economy situation rather than the, the uh, political situation itself. Um, of course, there are issues, uh, regulatory issues that we uh, we want to uh, to push forward, and that depends on politics. Um, but I would say that uh, given the the regulation environment that we have, uh, what is affecting uh, uh, startups the most would be the the economic uh, aspects of the political crisis that that we had. So uh, the country is facing a rise in unemployment, the interest rates. They are uh, way too high, and that obviously uh, would make less investment available for those startups. So these are probably the main the main concerns. But on the other hand, um, I can say that I've never seen the startup scene in Brazil growing as much as it is right now. Uh, and well, it, it may sound a little cliche, but every crisis also shows lots of opportunities. Uh, it's it's a time where money changes, change hands. Companies are more uh, uh, open to experiment and to try out new things. They have to move in order to face the crisis. Uh, as I've mentioned, most of the opportunities are now more going towards B two B than 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 B two C. So working to increase efficiency uh, with the companies, and even though the country's G GDP itself is uh, shrinking. The uh, uh, the tech sector is is still growing and is, and is growing a lot. I think that the fact that uh, we have a, a, a developing a, a economy, uh, most of the opportunities that some other uh, countries don't don't have anymore, we, we still do. We have space to grow uh, the the e-commerce, the digital. Uh, um, Economy. Most most of our both uh, commerce transactions, uh, payments, they are still uh, uh, offline. So there's a lot of room to grow and to increase uh, with technology, and that is a, a momentum of opportunity for sure. Prices are 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 good. Uh, the exchange rate uh, is is helping. So uh, if you have uh, an opportunistic view and taking the, the, the politics aside, it's it's a great timing to invest in Brazil. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, Felipe. Uh, so let's move to the second question if somebody doesn't have any other thing to add. 
Um, uh, the only uh, the question here about is uh, how do I expand in Brazil? Which uh, city is better, Sao Paulo or Rio? And this is one of the questions I think we had before um, because Brazil is really big. Like uh, it's not just about just Rio and Brazil and and Sao Paulo. So, what is your best advice on that part? Uh, can I answer that? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, I'm actually now, uh, you know, I'm living between Sao Paulo, uh, Florianópolis, and, and Canada. <laughs> so, uh, in Florianópolis, Santa Catarina, actually, uh, Santa Catarina is the state, uh, is one area that is really uh, booming, you know, the the tech sector there is 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 quite uh, you know quite surprising for people that are just used to hear about Sao Paulo and and Rio de Janeiro. So definitely there is you know Santa Catarina. There is of course Minas Gerais. It's another very important hub. Uh, when we talk about Sao Paulo, we also have like some uh, towns you know uh, around Sao Paulo like Campinas. Uh, so there is. Uh, you know, it's, it's quite exciting to see uh, what's happening uh, in the, the, especially in the startup ecosystem in Brazil. Uh, there is a lot more to explore than, than Sao Paulo and Rio for sure. Uh, I would definitely look into these other other places as well. Depends what kind of you know of startup uh, you're doing. What what kind of business you're doing. Perfect. Thank you so much, Regina. And we have two more questions, and we are going to leave the other questions for uh, to answer through email. Uh, so uh, thank you so much for all of them to um, to actually join us today. So we are going to answer these other two questions that actually are not totally related with <laughs> Brazil and the tech ecosystem. But one of them is uh, yeah, what is about uh, cyber security in some areas in Canada? This uh, person in particular is. Um, She's located in Brazil and she would like to know which one is the best city, if I understood well, <laughs> which one is the best city uh, to develop something in cybersecurity in Canada. Um, and she wants to want the answer in Portuguese. So who can help me there? <laughs> because I don't speak Portuguese, so sorry. Uh, you, <laughs> I, can, I, cert I certainly can do it, uh, if you wish. Sure. Uh, well, now it's going to be in Portuguese, right? Uh, for that question, yeah, she she is asking the answer in Portuguese. Ok. Well, a, a segurança cibernética aqui no Canadá é uma das áreas bem mais muito bem desenvolvidas e não é não é falar de cidades, mas tem grandes cidades que têm um grande destaque nessa área de tecnologia de informação. Uh, a grande a área da grande Toronto que tem a cidade de Waterloo, tem a cidade tem a, a, a cidade de Hamilton e tem a Toronto esse, esse triângulo é muito interessante onde você vai encontrar muitas empresas especializadas mas também tem o hub em Ottawa a cidade que é a capital e tem bastante também empresas de tecnologia da informação onde estão localizadas inclu, incluindo essa área de cybersecurity que você está perguntando Uh, essas são as duas áreas que eu recomendo, se tiver interesse, você pode nos contatar. A federação ela faz essa ponte também de empresas brasileiras com canadenses. Tem, uh, uh, tem duas, uh, dois polos aqui que, que a gente chama de uh, International Soft Landing Incubators. Uma aqui em Toronto, que é uh, a, a Miriam, nossa amiga, conhece muito bem. Uh, e tem uma outra em Ottawa, então a gente pode fazer essa conexão. É claro que podemos ajudar nesse sentido. Mas esses são os dois polos, basicamente. A Grande Toronto, que é o triângulo que eu mencionei, Waterloo, uh, Toronto e Hamilton, que de, e tem algumas coisas entre eles, e temos também o polo de Ottawa. Não tem muito conhecimento sobre Vancouver como está, ou uh, outras áreas do Canadá, mas basicamente é isso que eu tenho. Thank you, Joseph. Uh, so we have another question from Marcos Ricardo, and he he's asking how I can how can I join into a Canadian startup that will develop business in Brazil? That that's a tricky one. <laughs> so uh, I know uh, who is uh, making all these connections between Brazil and Canada has been Regina. So Regina, do you know any uh, startup that probably would like to partner with a Brazilian startup to join actually or to do business development in Brazil? 
Uh, we are working on that. Uh, there is, you know, a few companies that start to show interest, uh, and we are planning in doing the same program that we are doing now between Brazilian uh, startups going to Canada. We intend to do that uh, in the other way around. Uh, it's, still, it's still in early stage, but uh, you know that uh, we're gonna have something pretty soon. Uh, in that, and if you would like to to get in touch. Uh, you know, please, with, with Dream to Be, we would like to share some of the information what we have been doing. I need to understand a little bit of, you know, uh, if you want to get involved, like, as, as a partner here, as a startup here, or work in a company, I need to understand a little bit more how how this involvement would be. Uh, but all I can say now, we definitely, uh, you know, are looking to integrate, uh, you know, the ecosystem between, you know, Canadian and Brazil and vice versa. But we are trying to, to create a specific uh, program if we, you know, if we, I, I, I guess I can say a program to make that transition a little bit easier. Sounds good, Regina. Thank you so much for your answer. Now, we are going to, uh, you know, uh, finalize with some thoughts, uh, final thoughts for the audience. So, uh, we are going to start with uh, Eduardo. Eduardo, I wanted you first to let me know, uh, let, let know the audience in one word. How do you describe uh, the setup ecosystem in Brazil? And second, how can people contact you? Um, I think the, the in one word the uh, uh, startup ecosystem in Brazil I'd say thriving. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity. Uh, the people can contact me through my email, which is uh, esette at xinventures dot com. Uh, we look at a lot of investment deals from startups to early stage companies, and we're always looking for uh, co investors into the deals that we do. And we have a lot of experience with uh, outside investors also, so we'd be glad to get any email, any contact, and answer any questions. Thank you, Eduardo. Uh, so, Felipe, in one word, how do you describe this startup ecosystem in Brazil, and how can people contact you? I would say, well, opportunity. <laughs> I would say that several opportunities here. Uh, I'm more than open to... Uh, get in touch with you guys. My um, email is felipe.matos uh, at startupfarm.com.br or maybe uh, as easy as that is my Twitter handler at Felipe Matos so you can uh, get in touch with me. And um, uh, by the way, for those of you who are uh, uh, based in Quebec, uh, in, um, in July will be uh, my partner and CEO of Startup Farm will be there and will uh, give a, a, a talk about the Brazilian startup ecosystem. Uh, so you can also get in touch uh, about that as well. That's awesome, Felipe. So you are coming to uh, the uh, festival in Montreal. So that's great. I'll see you there as well. <laughs> so uh, oh. Regina, <laughs> yeah, I'll be there for sure. <laughs> Regina, uh, so uh, for you, Again, one, one word, uh, uh, describing the startup ecosystem in Brazil, and please let us know how to contact you. Yeah, I would say opportunity as well. Uh, you know, it's definitely uh, booming and full of opportunities, uh, and I'd love to help the companies that's, uh, that would like to explore more what Brazil has to offer. Um, are you being... Canada, I'm, I'm actually in roads to Canada now, <laughs> so I'll be in Toronto for a couple of days, and I'll be in Vancouver if someone is around and would like to chat. Uh, we are bringing a trade mission with Brazilian startups, um, you know, to Vancouver, but we're also exploring the other provinces, and there's lots of very interesting things, um, you know, about to happen. Uh, to connect even more uh, both uh, both ecosystems, I can be contacted at Regina with double P, like Peter, at dream2, two, two number, number two, letter B, dot com dot br, Regina dot mm -hmm. uh, at dream to be dot com dot br. Sorry, yeah, you, that's Regina. correct. <laughs> Thank you, Regina, and uh, don't worry, uh, for the other, uh, we are going to actually pass the um, uh, emails as per
your authorization with our speaker. So we are going to email you those emails, so don't worry. Uh, now, for Yusef, um, in one word, how do you describe the startup ecosystem in Brazil and uh, um, how they can contact you? I would describe it as promising. Uh, don't lose this opportunity mentioned by Regina and Felipe. Brazil is very flexible and creative country. You'll find a lot of opportunities there. We are here as a Federation of Canadian Brazilian Businesses along with our partners. Everybody's welcome. It's not for profit organization. We don't like we just connect. We are connectors. So you can find me at president at fcvb.org and Regina and Felipe, we are here for you anytime you wish. Thank you so much, Joseph. So finally, just to uh, say the last words here is that we are going to have another webinar about Brazil again. We, we have like four webinars this, uh, this month. And the other webinar is about business development and how you can actually do this business development in Brazil. So please join us this week as well. Uh, with some other speakers that they are going to give you some tips of how, about how to do business in Brazil, how to you know contact those potential clients there. And as well, I'd like to remind you that uh, we are having our main conference in Mexico this year. So please join us in the LATAM Startups Conference 3.0 in Mexico in October. So if you have any questions about the conference, don't uh, hesitate to contact us. Thank you so much uh, for your attention, and please uh, contact us in any time if you have any, any other question about Brazil and the startup ecosystem. Bye now.